Senator One. So this is Senate Government Operations. It is Wednesday, February 24th. And um, today we are looking at um, the outcomes for um, the state of Vermont. We have a set of outcomes that have been um, established with some minor changes. I would say we maybe actually put them into effect 10 years ago and um, have made some minor changes since then, but they are the, um, the aspirational goals that we have for the state of Vermont and for our, and for Vermonters. Um, we have a couple, the uh, Government Accountability Committee has made some changes and um, I'm going to let uh, Senator Collimore take it over from here because he's the chair of the Government Accountability Committee and he can then um, introduce Sue and Drew to go through the changes. Thank you, Madam Chair. And it's great to see everybody today. Um, we had two meetings uh, regarding this and also a public hearing and then uh, a workshop that we had on Saturday. Senator Rahm, who was a, a new member of GAC, uh, attended. And Senator White is also on the committee. And one of the things that we had established all the way through the process was a subgroup of folks who worked on some of the indicators that we wanted to potentially change. And then also what came out of that and what needs to be statutorily adjusted are outcome situations. So for those of you that don't know, GAC on its own, whenever it wants to, or by request of any standing committee, can change indicators which sit under the outcomes. So indicators give us some idea okay. of how well we are doing the outcomes. It is, but I'm in the middle of a meeting. They provide us okay. with uh, some data. And um, so we could change those at any time, but in order to change the outcomes, we need to have a bill and legislatively change it. And so what came out of that subgroup was a, a desire to do that. And uh, so with us today is Drew Wesley from the Agency of Human Services, who is the Director of Performance Improvement. I think I have that right. And Sue Zeller, who is the Chief Performance Officer for the state of Vermont. She is a, a member of GAC, although she doesn't get to vote, but she is the administrative uh, representative there. And uh, my thanks to both of those uh, folks for hard work on that committee level. There were also two House members uh, involved with that, uh, Representatives uh, Brumstead and Emily Kornheiser, who really uh, has very big shoulders. And uh, she had the biggest lift of all, I think. I think also, I could be wrong because I wasn't part of the subgroup, but I think uh, Kevin Coach Christie was also a part of that at, at some point uh, through the process. So I think those were the folks that were on the kind of subgroup. So, um, Sue? And Susanna. I'm sorry, Susanna uh, Davis, who's our Director of Racial Equity is also on that subgroup. So um, we are going to hopefully take a look at the bill that Amarin has drafted. Uh, in my mind, they, they're, I don't wanna say they're minor changes because they're not for reasons that hopefully both Sue and Drew will uh, elucidate. Um, they're not a lot of language changes, but I think they do um, refocus our efforts in terms of uh, government accountability committee. So I don't know whether Drew or Sue want to take the lead on this. Sue Zeller will, okay. And uh, maybe explain what the changes are. So just to give a little history to anyone that doesn't know it, the 10 outcomes were established, oh, sorry, for the record, Sue Zeller, Chief Performance Officer, Agency of Administration. The 10 outcomes were originally set uh, in Act 186 from the 2014 session. Since that time on outcomes, we've made a couple of wording changes here or there, but we really haven't, um, we haven't made any major changes. So so this one is an important change. When we were working with the subgroup and with the public on coming up with 
indicators that we could use uh, to add into the existing uh, outcomes report with the goal of having comparative outcomes so that you could look at um, you know, uh, an outcome for incarceration rates, and I'm making this up, incarceration rates for uh, BIPOC population versus incarceration rates for the general population. And you'd wanna be able to see those together so that you could see what the disparity, um, and, and when I say you, I mean the legislature and the public. So you could see the disparity and begin to ask questions about why is there a disparity and um, coming up with policies or programs directed at trying to change that disparity. So when we were working on that, and, and it's very interesting um, to realize that two of our outcomes are, uh, are based on small populations, small distinct populations and shouldn't really be, and I'll let Drew go into all the reasons for that. But basically we wanna combine the one outcome that was about elders living in, um, in situations that they want and um, uh, um, disabled people living in uh, situations that they want and homes that they want. And when we were looking at disaggregating those, it became very clear that we, those two outcomes should not be separate and they're a little too, they're too specific to be a population-wide outcome. So uh, the committee came up with the recommendation to GAC that we were going to uh, put a bill forward under sponsorship from um, DevOps to address that. So Drew, you wanna take it and explain some of the um, uh, reasons why? Sure. Um, hey everyone, it's nice to see you all. Drew Wesley, Director of Performance Improvement at the Agency of Human Services. Um, so as you all know, the Act 186 legislation was written according to the results-based accountability framework. Um, and actually the 2014 statute, I think, um, was a sort of improved from an even earlier statute in which um, originally Vermont established outcomes of well being. And so we drew from some of the language that we had used in the past, even if we weren't sure that it was um, going to stick forever. I'll also say that in 2014, uh, when we were developing outcomes and indicators originally, there was a there was a fair amount of participation from the nonprofit sector in addition to the state sector, but I would not say that there was a robust nor comprehensive or entirely inclusive process to establish those outcomes and indicators. So I think it's appropriate just in general to think about what we have as a foundation that we can now improve substantially in general. And this is one step in that direction, um, but I think we need to keep the bigger picture in mind and be thinking about what sort of inclusive process can the Government Accountability Committee or the legislature essentially sponsor that will enable more voices to contribute to this conversation. But to Sue's point, um, the results-based accountability framework is set up in such a way that we can create aspirational, as you've already said, population outcomes of well-being that set out desired conditions for all Vermonters. And they truly are intended to be aspirational so that we are starting from a place of common ground before we get into some of our um, you know, differing opinions about how to actually achieve those conditions. And so it's intended to help us to create collective impact. And so the basic frame for an outcome of well-being would be all Vermonters um, are or all Vermonters have or all Vermonters experience some condition. And that's sort of the basic structure of an outcome. And we, um, the framework advises against incorporating a specific population into the outcome itself, because that can actually be accomplished through indicators, as Sue suggested. So that using actual measurable data, so trend lines that we can see over time, we can understand who in Vermont actually is achieving this outcome and who isn't, and to what extent, and how do we actually understand how, what the experience would be and how do we measure what the experience would be for Vermonters um, who we are working towards achieving those conditions for. And so to get very specific, 
Um, we have two outcomes right now, seven and eight. Um, Vermonters, um, older Vermonters live with dignity and in settings they prefer, and Vermonters with disabilities live, in, live with dignity and in settings they prefer. Both of those outcomes do include a target population, and they also include a, a fairly specific desired condition. Um, and it had been a longstanding recommendation, or I guess I'll say question, maybe recommendation is too strong a word, from the Department of Disabilities, Aging, Independent Living, and the Agency of Human Services to think about why we wouldn't just include indicators about older Vermonters and Vermonters with disabilities throughout all the other outcomes of well being. So, for instance, talking about Vermonters over certain ages um, in the Vermonters are healthy outcome or in the Vermonters, Vermont families are safe nurturing, stable, and supported. So rather than sort of silo indicators by population, we wanna make sure that every population is represented fully in each outcome. So that would be the best practice of results-based accountability. And Sue, I hope that sort of yeah. accomplishes. Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, we're all learning as a group. Uh, many of us have been doing this uh, since 2011, I think, or 12. And you learn and your expertise grows as you go along. And one of the challenges that we have, not just us or GAC, but departments and even entire branches of state government have this, uh, it's hard to not see yourself. So everyone wants to have their own section, you know? <laughs> and so we, it's very difficult to uh, get everybody to understand that if it's a generalized Vermont is healthy section, all different departments and agencies that have anything to do with health are appearing under there by definition. You don't have to have a section for the judiciary and a section for the legislature. And effect. so we ourselves sort of tripped over this one, I'll say. And um, uh, because I think, didn't, weren't these together and we split them? historically and now we're, now we're so splitting them wasn't the right thing to do either but we think that consolidating them and rewording them to be broader and encompass um, the greater population under which we can do specific indicators about sub-level populations is the way to go and so that is what's represented it uh, represented can't speak this afternoon is represented in the bill that uh, that Amarin has in front of her. So um, I'll let Amarin, you wanna take it from there and talk about the bill at all? And, um, Senator Rahm, did you have a question? Well, yeah, but you know, before we walk through the bill, I just, I know Drew that you referenced a, a, not a particularly robust public participation process in the past. I'd love for you to talk about your analysis of the public participation process this time, because this is a huge deal. This is the mission and theory of change, essentially, for the state. This is a way for Vermonters to hold themselves accountable to this. You have places like New Hampshire that have whole public participation agencies and do things like New Hampshire Listens, et cetera. I don't see any of that so far. So I just, I think it's really dangerous to talk about these outcomes without discussing the public participation that, that has not occurred. So Drew, do you mind if I take that? Sure. Thank you. So uh, part of the, the charge in Act 154 last year was that the Chief Performance Officer, the uh, Director of uh, Racial Diversity, and the SEC, as represented by uh, Coach Christie, join in a group with other, the subgroup with other members to come up with recommendations to GAC for uh, uh, BIPOC indicators. And as um, Senator Rahm said, uh, part of it, the challenge was uh, the bifurcated session last year. So the actual bill or the act 154 didn't get out until the end of September, wasn't signed into law until early October. And it left us really insufficient time to try to meet the March 1st deadline of making the recommendations. Uh, Emily, uh, Representative Kornheiser and Drew uh, and the committee worked really hard to try to make this as uh, broadly participated in as possible, but 
frankly, we didn't achieve that. So the recommendation letter that we're still crafting um, is due to back to GAC on the first. And it's going to say that um, we recommend that we disaggregate the existing indicators, which, you know, certain existing indicators, which we're listing, and that will be incorporated into the upcoming report that the chief performance office does in September, but that over the summer GAC work um, either, you know, get an outside facilitator or something, but we have to broaden the participation it was really less than robust. Um, it, if we're going to make recommendations, we're not comfortable, none of us are comfortable with the amount of public participation we had. And so we're not comfortable using that little bit of data and input to make recommendations. So, so we as a committee feel we tried our best, but we really did not achieve the goal, which was to get broad participation from the communities and organizations. So, so that, so we're not going to make recommendations to add indicators specific to the BIPOC population, except for by uh, disaggregating existing ones, ones that are already there that we uh, know that should be disaggregated. So we're gonna ask GAC to spend the summer doing a better job of this. Drew, you want to? Um, no, before uh, Drew does, can I just say, that there, we're dealing with two different things here. Yes, that's We're correct. not dealing with the indicators at all today. No, that's, right. that's not what we're That's dealing actually with. my question. I, I don't know what the public process was about the out, changing the outcomes. I don't think there was any. Well, I, I we, we could have um, input, I guess, from people. I, I do not want to start changing. I, I think it's uh, folly for us to start changing all of the outcomes. We are changing them, and we've had we're no changing, process around that. Yeah, yes, we're changing two. We're changing one word in one, and we're changing. We're combining two outcomes. To, we're not changing those outcomes. We're change, We're combining them as. So I guess we could have public input into into this if we wanted to. Um, I think the outcomes are of great importance to Vermonters and. They, those are really substantive changes. And so that's what I was asking is there has been no public process on changing the outcomes. We, that, that's, up, that's our responsibility in this committee is to have that public input. So if any, um, <clears throat> between um, before March 12th, we can have public input on it. We can open it up and we can have people come in and testify. What did I miss is happening on March 12th that we have such a crossover. Short... Okay. That's the short deadline with a week. It is a time. short deadline, but, <laughs> um, and I don't, Senator Collimore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I saw Drew's hand up, so I want to go to her. Yep. I'll just mention a couple of things, Senator Rahm. Um, I know you had sent an email at one point about the possibility of delaying what we did on Saturday past March 1st, um, the issue there would have been the optics of it. I, I think the GAC committee didn't feel like that was a good idea to sort of put off what we were charged with doing statutorily. In other words, we wanted to step up to the plate and, and do our best to do what we were supposed to do by the date that we were given, um, rather than sort of kick the can down the road and not do anything until later and I think that's an important consideration. The other thing I'll mention, as Senator White mentioned, if we, and I'm perfectly willing to, to, to take testimony, but we risk not making crossover with a bill if we do that, because we have to uh, basically get it out of this committee and it's got to go to the other body uh, by that day if it's a policy question in order for it to get acted on this year. I, I will make this pledge. We will, the, we have it on the, um, on our um, schedule again on Friday, if people want to come in, and we're not going to talk about indicators. So in two days, for, in two days. You no, mean. let me finish. We have it on our schedule on Friday. We also have a week when we come back to finish things up. We could spend um, most of Wednesday 
looking at this issue. But I, I think that, um, and I, I guess we can open it up completely and have people testify on all of the outcomes if they want to, but we're going to ask them to testify on this bill, these two outcomes that are being changed. There are three, to my knowledge, being changed. Oh, okay, I thought it was two. They, we've combined two and we've um, added a word to another one. I don't, I don't know how, how that constitutes public process, but I'm willing. Well, I, I don't know how else to do public process. Um, and I am sorry, but um, okay, never mind. Drew. Um, thank you for letting me chime in here. Um, I, I think that there is value in changing the outcomes and indicators because they do set a common and measurable agenda for the state of Vermont. And in theory, it allows the nonprofit sector, the state sector, the business sector, um, community organizations, all to align their efforts towards something measurable. And that has a lot of value. And I think we perhaps have not done a good enough job to date in the legislative and executive branches spreading the word about how to use Act 186 and how to get involved. I think if we had, we might have seen more public participation in the public hearing and the workshop that GAC did host around the indicators. Um, and so I say that just because I think that um, it's appropriate to be, um, I think, to ask questions about whether or not we could, with the time before March 12th, invite enough people who would come and really participate meaningfully. I would actually recommend that we think about both outcomes and indicators, even though they have different processes for actually being established as changes over the summer. I would follow Sue's recommendation that the Government Accountability Committee essentially manage or shepherd a facilitation process, maybe with an outside facilitator who can really spend time bringing stakeholders to the table, whether it's Zoom or in person, to have discussions around um, outcomes and indicators together. And I think that um, if we rush, I, I'm not exactly sure what the urgency is for rushing the changes with the outcomes, to be honest. And to Senator Rahm's point, we did not have um, a, an open process to visit the outcomes. It really kind of came up peripherally in our conversations about the indicators. And so while I'm happy to see movement around Act 186 in this committee, I don't I don't know that I would advocate for making a change, um, for making a change without public process involving more even than just testimony. So I hope that was clear. But I, I would actually, if there's an opportunity to recommend waiting for the summer to revisit outcomes and indicators together in a public process, that's what AHS would advocate for. So to put off everything until summer. As Sue said, I think we will we we are committing to exploring as the executive branch how to disaggregate as many indicators as we possibly can right. in the current Act 186 report, um, and that that would be a substantial improvement from what is there now in terms mm -hmm. of understanding racial inequities and disparities. But that we we shouldn't move forward beyond that until a more robust public process in summer 2021 to invite stakeholders to help inform how we would improve Act 186 holistically through an equity lens. So um, do we, we just would put off this bill until, and just not do anything this year? That's the recommendation that I'm putting on the table, but okay, I see Sue raising her hand too. Senator Polina, you're muted. Sorry about that. I was actually going to ask the same question that Jeanette uh, just asked. Does it doesn't mean putting off this bill for now. And you said, yes, that's your recommendation. So that was my question. If I understand that correctly, if I understand the options correctly. And I think, Sue, um, I saw you shake your head and you're muted. Our, um, our process uh, does not prevent us, or this the, uh, not putting this bill through this session does not prevent us from disaggregating and making recommendations to GAC yeah. to disaggregate the existing indicators under the outcomes where they're at at this time. Um, we might not 
uh, be able to, you know, do a couple of indicators because of the awkward nature of these couple of outcomes, but that can wait another year. We have plenty of indicators that we need to meet with departments and see how they're, if they're collecting the data and if not, how they could collect the data. And so there's plenty to do on, on figuring out and appropriately disaggregating the existing um, indicators. So that won't slow down the process of the goal of being able to report disaggregated indicators for the BIPOC population. I'm, you know, I'm now I'm completely confused because we are talking, are we talking, I, I think we all agree that we need to put out off the general conversation about indicators yeah. until well, summer. That, that was yes. outcomes. Yeah. No, I no, out, no I said indicators. We have all agreed, I believe, that we need to put off the conversation right. about indicators until summer when we can. <laughs> let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. And are we also saying that we need to completely um, begin to relook at all of our outcomes over the summer and to re-establish to establish new outcomes? That I, there are two separate things here, and and I want to make sure that we're talking about the same thing because. I believe that we've all agreed that your letter will come to us about um, disaggregating information about right. um, in the in the indicators, mm -hmm. and that that will the the um, guts of that work will be done over the summer, and come later at a later date and come back. But are we also talking about relooking at the ten outcomes and re? thinking what those outcomes should be. That's my question. Can, can I make yeah. a clarification here? So there's actually three issues on the table. One is, one could have been done 20 years ago without any legislation, which is disaggregating all of our major state indicators by race. Uh, yes. What, we, what I hope we focus on this year is do we need, do we need money and infrastructure to actually disaggregate all of that information by race and gender and other uh, identity groups. So I, I would hope that's, that's a conversation I wanna have is let's disaggregate all of our current indicators by race and let's figure out if, if government has the tools to do that. Then there's a question about, do we, we have hundreds of indicators. We have lots of indicators or do we, can we narrow them so that in the future we're looking at more engine lights, as we might say, for what really tells us we're going in the right direction or not on some of these things. That I think is a medium term conversation. I personally don't see talking about the outcomes as putting it off. I think a robust public process coming out of a pandemic is an incredible opportunity to have Vermonters share in a public process that never happened around the outcomes of quality of life in Vermont after they've had a lot of time to think about that in an ongoing emergency. So that's what I'm putting out there, but I in no way want to slow down disaggregation by race and other identity markers of the data that we have in state government. Right. So where are we? I, 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 I still am confused because I think that um, if, if there are some things that will be disaggregated. We know that, right? That's being already being suggested. Whether we disaggregate every single indicator, I think is a different discussion. And, um, and then, so what we have before us now is three changes to the outcomes. Are we saying we should not make those changes to the outcomes without more public input. And if we have public input, is it just about those changes to the outcomes or are we opening it up to, to looking at all of the outcomes and um, changing those? And I do have to say that there, were, there weren't a lot of um, individuals involved in this conversation, but we have been, we have been working on these outcomes for 
many years and there have been many, many, many groups involved in the conversations over those years, many. It started when Diane Snelling was still in the, in the Senate and we've been working, taking testimony for all those years. So Senator Clarkson, you had a comment. Yeah, I, I would take all of you, all those of you who serve on this committee, and I know Keisha's new to the committee, but I'd take Sue and uh, Drew and, and, and Brian and your, and, and Keisha now, uh, your recommendations on, is this a good time to open it up and review, and, and review all, all of these aspects of it? I mean, yeah. when was the last, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's just seven years we're just seven years into it. It's not like we've hit a 10 year mark to open it all up, but is this an appropriate moment to open it up and, and actually review some of our assumptions? And, and I mean, I guess that's my question to you is. True. Sue and I have talked about, about this a lot. And I, so I think the answer to your question, Senator Clarkson is yes. I think Senator Rahm's point about coming out of a pandemic and also a national and certainly in-state mm -hmm. reckoning with racial injustice. I think it's the perfect time to say, what are we committing to as a state? There's also non-state efforts um, like the Vermont Center for Rural Development has undertaken with the Vermont Property yeah. Network. Um, so, so I think it's a good time to take a step back and say, how do we want to articulate our overriding vision for the state and who needs right. to be involved in doing that. And so I yeah. think to clarify, because I can see how these threads are getting confused, I think it's true that um, Sue on March 1st will be sending recommendations that include the executive branch committing to by the September 2022 one. report, <laughs> disaggregating as many indicators as we can by yeah. at least race, if not also by gender and other identity characteristics. Um, and then, so that's one that's happening on March 1st, we'll make those recommendations. I think to your point about these three outcomes on the table and to Senator Clarkson's question, I think that summer 2021 would be a good time for the Government Accountability Committee to open up a robust facilitation, facilitated um, stakeholder engagement process to look at both the outcomes and the indicators. And so we may decide to keep a number of indicators that are now disaggregated that we think are really meaningful. But to Senator Rahm's point, we may also realize that there's a bunch of things we're measuring that are not helping us better understand the, the very different experience of Vermonters across the state. And so we may want to make wholly fresh recommendations at the end of summer 2021 to the um, to the Senate and the House GovOps committees about the outcomes and also what indicators we believe should fall under them. Great. I, no, I, I'm as I listen to this conversation, I think this may be the watershed moment for that that review and regrouping. Sue. Well, you know, part of me, my hair is standing up because I'm going, ah, we're going to change everything, but um, we always have to be open to changing these. Although, you know, you, you have to fight the urge to change everything constantly because then you never get uh, a consistent um, a particular measure or outcome or results over time, which is where you can really see the trends. So, right. you know, um, uh, you know, half empty, half full, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, it, but this, we've been doing this, as you say, since 2014. So it probably is. And I think people are comfortable now with the process and understand it much better. Um, you know, I, I think about how departments would have reacted if two years or three years into this, we changed everything. And, uh, you know, we've had, we've had our challenges, as you all well know, in getting departments to understand and accept and train and, and get all of this. So, but I think it is a good time to relook at it. And I'm sure, I'm confident that we'll keep, um, you know, a, a vast number maybe even, or certainly a lot of the existing indicator because they're pretty broad in general and in the, they're in the areas that you care about, the economy, the, you know, the health of the population, the environment, things like that. So I don't have, uh, you know, but but my hair, is it still standing up? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I would suggest then that we just drop this topic for now. Senator Clarkson. I don't want your hair standing on end, Sue Zeller, <laughs> but I, 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 I have run a longitudinal study since um, 2087. Uh, and, and I, the long, I know the integrity of over time being able to right. view exactly the same questions. I get yeah. that. But we are very bad on our longitudinal study. We do add quite a few things. <laughs> so it's gotten longer and longer. But I, I also appreciate that things change and humans resist change, even though it's the one thing we're guaranteed. It's, it's like we resist it so fully. So I wish you good luck balancing all those truisms and life realities. Story of my life. I will tell you, you have no idea the battles that were fought about even coming up with 10 population outcomes that are um, really aspirational and kind of um, apple pie. Um, that, yeah. That's what the outcomes are is they say this is where we would like to be as a state and there it took it took a long time to come up with what um we thought we wanted to be as a state so if, and we can we can relook at at that and see what it is that we might think differently now about where we want to be as a state and we may want to be in many of the same places yeah. but looking at different aspects of how we get there well those are the indicators so and, yeah. and unfortunately um one of the things that we we ran into and we're going to have to be very deliberative about this in um in uh with a lot of input from people is the understanding the difference between an outcome and an indicator right. and that and there that's a huge difference yeah. and um it took 10 years to um get legislators to understand the difference and and so when people start thinking about um indicators and wanting those to be the outcomes it <laughs> anyway it's going to be it'll be an interesting process i think people still want to be happy and economically secure i mean they're <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we may have different ways of getting there, but I think some of the big outcomes we want will not change. No, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so Senator- so it's, it's, it's the second day in a row we've decided to drop a bill. Mm -hmm. and, and we've also dropped retirement. We're just right. dropping things right and left. We can't well, retire? We, we, no, what? we're we're You're deferring the house is going the house is going first. Oh. We're going down the route of less government, right? <laughs> we're 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 deferring to the house to start oh. the process. On retirement, we're yes, that's, retirement. That's, we're not dropping that topic, but we're just letting them um take the lead on it. Yeah. They, we we want to see 150 people get into agreement before 30 take their <laughs> so Senator Collimore. Yes. Are you okay I'm, with this? I'm fine. If that's uh, what we want to do, I'm, I'm all for it. Okay. Okay. And, and, and Madam Chair, if it means we see more of Sue and Drew, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Amen. No, that's not. And hopefully it'll be in person. Wouldn't that Senator be nice? Rom? I think the the one thing that I would like to see come out of this session, and it could be done through GAC, is that we have a, a budget to have a real public participation process over the summer and beyond. You really can't do this well without some resources. And it sounds being new to GAC like there has been no money to do a public process. Um, so I don't know if there's a way for our committee to recommend an appropriation for this process to take place. But I think that's what needs to come out of this session if we're gonna do a better job than we have in the past. Well, Sue's office has a budget. The, the, Sue, yeah, and you're not looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at my budget. Um, but I would, as I said it to the, the, the GAC committee, you know, and 
telling tales out of school. I know Steve Klein's got money put aside. He always has money left over every year. And that's how he does all those studies they do. So, <laughs> you know, just like grab some of that. <laughs> so I'm happy to keep- I didn't say yeah. that. I didn't say yeah. that. You did, we didn't hear anything. Okay, we didn't definitely. hear anything. So I guess what we can do is try and figure out what it might take, what it might look like, yep. and um, go from there. And um, may I, Madam Chair, yes. may I add one thing? Yes. Drew, I love the fact that you mentioned uh, the Matt Dunn Center on Rural Innovation and, and Center on Rural, I think you mentioned another Center on Rural Studies or something. Development, yeah. Paul Costello. We, we Paul Costello. now- yeah. We now have resources we never had in 2014, and really good right. ones. And right. that would be, you know, great to. Uh, and we have the engagement of huge communities that we, in quite a large number of people that we also didn't have as in, as engaged in 2014. So I'm going to end this conversation. I realize we are about half an hour over our time. And I didn't realize that because I was expecting a call at two o'clock. I told Senator Polina that he would have to take over at two o'clock when somebody arrives at my house for me to sign a paper. So I thought I didn't think it was two yet. So um, we're going to um, end this conversation now and we'll take it. We can take it up again on Friday and continue the discussion about where we go and how, how we um, do some how we work with the GAC committee and um, uh, get some uh, public participation over the summer. Is that okay with everybody? Sure. Okay, great. So I do see that, thank you, Drew and Sue. Oh, Drew and Sue. Drew and Sue. Drew and Sue. Thank you, everyone. Okay, yeah. It's Drew. <laughs>